Greetings everyone, coming to you from the Church of God of Prophecy in Arcadia, Florida. Our series, which we will continue just a few more sessions. Thank God that he's brought us this far. We've learned the miracles of Jesus. Each time I read the miracles of Jesus, I can glean something that applies to me today. In other words, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We sometimes think that these miracles, well, that was back then, of course. That's what the Bible says. But there are many miracles today of which I've seen a blinded eye open and seen an individual heal that uh, had a disorder, among other things in my life. God is still alive. God is still healing his people. Now, God, in a lot of cases, heals. In a lot of cases, he doesn't. We're going to see here that uh, Jesus healed a man at the pool of Bethesda, Bethesda, and we want to understand that this is recorded so that it would be remembered for generations, even coming down from the day that this man was healed until right now that I'm bringing forth this message. So it's a, when Jesus heals, it's for a testimony to his glory. When a person doesn't die or get healed, it's a testimony to his glory. Okay, so there's two things about healing. It's between Jesus and the doctor. As I've said many times, I know Jesus heals, and I know that Jesus uses doctors. So if it's a situation where that person, be it me, you, or us, that we need medications uh, for certain types of diseases, I don't feel bad if I take my blood thinner uh, to keep my heart uh my bloodstream thinned out. I know God heals. Until he does, I'm going to trust him. But I've prayed and asked him. I've talked to him about it, and I feel in my heart, spiritual mind, uh, my spiritual being, that it's okay that he take, that I take, not he take, that I take medications. So don't feel bad if you take a medication if you're in the process of being healed. We can see the length of time in this particular message that it was before the man got healed. 38 years, we're going to get into it. The man was in, infirm, infirmed for 38 years. And then he got his prayer answered. Let's bow our heads and invite the Holy Ghost, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit into this message today, that we can give the Godhead the glory Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today in the name of your Son, Jesus, through and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Lord, ask that you take control of my spiritual being, take control of my mouth, my tongue, every part of me. Lord, I want to lay it on your altar in heaven that you can use it for your glory. I'm nothing. My memory is nothing without the spiritual work of the Holy Ghost, and I thank you for that. And pray that those that are listening today, Lord, will get something from this message to glorify you in your precious and holy name. So we're in John chapter 5, uh, and today's miracle is he, Jesus healed a crippled man at the pool of Bethesda. After these things was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem a sheep gate, a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five covered porticos. And these were lying down a multitude of infirm people. So we see here that that was a multitude. We see where Jesus healed the woman with the issue of blood. She raised the widow's son and this uh, and those things. But also he healed when he fed the 5,000, he healed their appetite. Jesus healed great numbers at one time. More than one, thousands that came to his ministry. So there were blind men, there were crippled people, of those members whose bodies were withered, waiting for the stirring of the water. Now they're sitting there waiting, and in getting this together, I kind of thought, and just a thought, were they praying? Were they asking for help? Or were they just waiting hour after hour, day after day, for a particular time when the water would be stirred, or were they praying? In order to have anything from Jesus Christ, we need to pray. Our prayers need to be for the glory, His glory, knowing that those prayers can be answered, 
Of course, if we ask for a, a, to win a lottery, that's not praying God's will. God provides a provision. So they were waiting for the water, uh, stirring of the water, for an angel from time to come was accustomed to descend into the pool. Now the angel never stayed there. He came down, stirred the water, and while the water was stirred, then the first one who stepped in after stirring up the water was cured of whatever disease had gotten possession of him and was holding him. Now, look at this, look at this thought here. Then the first one who stepped in after stirring up of the water. Okay, right, in, right above that, we see that there were people that couldn't walk. They were crippled. So their faith, at the moment that they saw the stirring of the water, and we want to touch on this, is when they stepped into it. So by faith, they said, oh, the water is being stirred and was cured of whatever disease they had, got in possession of holding them down. Now, I want to go into this a little deeper in here, that why did they wait until the water was stirred for their healing? The sheep gate, most likely, this is a reference to the gate identified in Nehemiah 3 and 1. That's where Nehemiah went back and repaired the gates of Jerusalem. That's a, a very good story, a very good fact. I should say, in the Bible of how Nehemiah went back and rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. So in chapter 3 and verse 1 of Nehemiah, verses 12 and through 39, it was a small opening in the north gate wall of the city, just west of the northeast corner, there is a pool. So we want to identify where this at. Now why am I being specific? It was not a, a pool someplace other than Jerusalem. It gives a detailed account of where that pool was. Now imagine that, that in the Holy Ghost inspiring John to write this word, this gospel, that they gave exact, exact location of this pool so there would never be a question of, well, was it uh, someplace else? Was it there, really there? The Bible says he went up to Jerusalem and the pool was there. That's an identification. Kind of like a marker. We call them GPSs or whatever today. Uh, markers and everything on our GPS. So we want to continue with the thought about the pool. Now there was a certain man who had spent 38 years in his infirm condition. Again, was it the Lord's will? The Bible doesn't say that he stayed that way for 38 years. Did he pray for 38 years for a healing and one day he received it? Now, it was really the sheep gate, not a market, where the pool was. It was a sheep gate. The pool was not there. The name of the pool was Bethesda, which means House of Olives or House of Mercy. It had five porches. A multitude of impotent folk means people without strength. That means to me that some of them probably had to help someone take them there, pick them up at the end of the day or whatever the case may be to try to get their healing, but they didn't have enough strength to even get there on their own. This is the explanation of why they were there. The belief was that an angel stirred the water at a certain season. So let's get into the meat of this. There are a number of people today, just as there was then, who are sick in their minds, ignorant and superstitious. In other words, the belief was that the angel stirred the water at a certain time. Okay? So they believed that. He would come at a certain time and do it. But rather than asking for help from God or whatever, they would wait for a certain time. Again, did they pray? Did they fast? Did they read the Bible? Did they go to the synagogue and pray? What was the case? Case. There are quite a few people who go to faith healers today who believe they get healed. Now, I want to explain that a little bit. True healing from God, if a person gets healed from God, if they let the enemy come in, he can steal that blessing. If their faith becomes weak, oh, God didn't really heal you. You see, you had a limp for the last five years. You didn't have it for a few days, but it's starting to come back. When God heals us spiritually, financially, we have to believe it, claim it. We have to stay with it when the enemy comes and tries to take it away. So 
there is always a question whether or not they were either ever really sick. Another question is whether they stayed permanently healed, as I said. There's always a question. But when Jesus heals you personally, there is no doubt in your mind that you are healed. And when I say claim it by faith, Jesus said, go your way. Show yourself to the priest. Sin no more. Whatever the case is, but your faith has to remain in that healing that came only from Jesus Christ. So people will come to you, the best of the best of best of friends will say, Oh, did you really get healed? You look a little different today. You are you okay? Now I'm not criticizing people, but that sets up doubt in your mind. Well what do you mean? What do you mean I look different today? Well, they're not saying you look happy or joyous, you you, you just look different. Remember, none of us, this is very important, none of us are being, are not immune to the works of the enemy. Look at Peter. Look at how many times Peter went against the Lord and, and his teachings and that. And here was a man was saved. Judas was a man was saved. So when we get our healing, we have to believe it, stay with it, and not believe it in our own minds, but we have to believe it by faith in Jesus that he died at Calvary for my healing. In other words, when, when the Lord healed me of, 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 of this or that, I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you died at Calvary. The enemy comes in and says, oh, you know, you, you don't really feel good today. Sleep an extra hour in bed. Uh, you'll feel better. And I say, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me at Calvary, because through you I've received my healing. My faith has to be in the healer, not the healing. There's three kinds of Christians. Number one, those who stand back and won't get near the water, these are watchers. This is what happened at the pool. They sat back and watched. They just watched, waiting for the water to be stirred. We have to get involved when we go to church. Yesterday we had one of the most tremendous movements of the Holy Ghost that I've seen in a long time. It was unbelievably. And when the Lord wants us to do something, he doesn't want us to stand back. So during that time, if he wanted me to go pray for an individual or do this or that, it's my responsibility to move on up. It's okay to say, God, is that really you? Yes, he says, it's me. It's the Holy Spirit telling you to go pray for Sister Brown or Sister Judy or whoever the case may be. But don't sit back and wait for somebody else to get your blessing. You may be praying for, for financial, you may be paying, praying for rent money, to get a car, to get married, whatever. This may be the time to get your blessing by obeying God. What does our word say? It's better to obey God than man. Who is man? That's our own conscience telling us, oh, what will people think? Oh, they may not let you pray for them. They may refuse you. That's us talking. To ourselves. Now, should we continue with this? Yes. There are people that talk to themselves a lot. I know a few and I'm not criticizing them. But they will talk to themselves. They will give themselves an answer. Should I use this screwdriver? Should I turn this way? Should I do that? Should I use this tool? And they'll say, yeah, do it this way. No, don't. They're talking to themselves. So the enemy is going to come and say, in our mind, it's, that's there, uh, not that he lives in our mind, but he's there to try to convince us not to believe ourselves. Those who come to the water but need help getting in, these are waiters. Well, if, if, uh, if the Lord wants me to have a prayer answered, I have to have Brother Vince come and give a witness. I'm just going to wait it out and see what happens. You wait too long, the spirit leaves, 
What have you got? Again, obedience is better than sacrifice. That means follow the leading of the Spirit. In other words, when He impresses in your spiritual soul, go now, go to the altar and pray, do whatever you need to do according to His direction towards Jesus Christ, do it. Those who are at the edge of the water ready to jump in, these are worshipers. They worship the water. That water's moving. That water's going to be the answer. As soon as I get in there, that water's going to heal me. I can tell you right now that there's no water going to heal you. Now that may sound anti-denominational in a lot of ways. There is no water to heal you. The oil that we use to anoint other individuals, that oil does not heal you. It is a way to get our mind upon the Spirit of God to be healed. So rather than sitting there and saying, I'm just going to wait until the water is stirred, oh now it's ready, we have to have faith in the person, the angel, Jesus, the Son of God, that stirred that water, had that angel come down. He's the one that controls everything. Jesus controls the angels. Go down and stir the water. Don't worship the water. Don't worship the angel. Worship the creator that created all things. Mm, mm, mm. Worship him. I'm in a good mood. I see people. Boy, I just, I can really worship when sister so-and-so sings. Brother so-and-so, I can just get, boy, just gets me right in the spirit. They're just an instrument. Worship the one that sent the anointing. When the Holy Spirit stirs the spiritual waters of our lives or churches, we must move into the presence of God at that moment. So we'll have a few more sessions on this, and then we're going to start a new series. Let's bow our heads and pray in closing. I hope you've got something from this. I want to praise God, worship Him, and, and be humble, have humility. But when the anointing wants me as a preacher, teacher, whatever, evangelist, whatever the case may be, to speak for him, I want to be obedient. And this is what I feel he's had me to say today. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, when I do not receive an answer to my prayers, let me examine my own motives. Let me examine myself. Guide me through your spirit to pray with an honest and sincere heart. Amen. God bless. Trust you get something out of this. Love you.